guys, I'm MZ, and this week I'm going to go over the last game gem I just did, Godot Wild Gem 60, where I had a week to come up with a game based around the theme Malfunctions. Okay, so off the bat, I just gotta say, I don't know whether or not I love game gems or hate them. For some reason, they just take up my whole life. I don't have it in me to kind of do a little bit here, take a day off. A game gem for me is like start to finish, I can't stop working on it, can't stop thinking about it, spending way too much time and overscoping it to all hell. I even caught myself this time multiple times saying, that's it, that's enough, don't go any farther. And then a little brain thought would just creep in and the worms in my brain would just be like, add that in, do it, it's gonna be fun. And it's never as fun as the time it took to put it in divided by me wanting to sleep and it's just a mess, okay? It doesn't work. So what I'm getting at is if last game jam was rushed and it was in a tight, tight time frame, this one was that for me times 10. It was just way too much and I should have backed down long ago. Okay, so with the theme being malfunction, let's jump into what I decided to do. For starters, I knew I wanted to shy away from a roguelike and to shy away from traditional combat. I wanted to try something that I normally wouldn't try in a full-fledged game because it is just a game jam. And then very quickly I settled on, I wanted to be in an elevator and be a repairman. The idea that you're on a journey and your whole objective is just to make sure that the machine gets there as best as possible. So usually my go-to on the first day is let's make a character, let's put him in an environment, and let's start to play. I get the vibe that some people really like these early stages of development. You just have no baggage of your old game, of your old code, and all the mess that comes with that. And there is some truth to that, but I'm tired of doing old stuff. I wanted to get new stuff in there. And new stuff for me is a lot, because I'm a new developer. So one of the first things I did was get the wrench in, and the wrench you can swing as a melee attack, and then it functions as a combo attack in a really small sense. It goes up and then down. But this also came with two ideas. One, um, the item exists on the ground. The item goes to the player when they walk over it. And two, when there's multiple items, you're picking up the new item and dropping the old item. So really shortly after the wrench, I added the extinguisher just so I could have a second item to try out. Oh, also, I like the idea that the extinguisher pushed you. So right in the beginning, I was like, when you shoot the extinguisher, make the player move the opposite direction faster than their walk speed. And for me personally, that was always fun to zip around the map. And this is pretty much where I left off on day one. Going into day two, I added the player's health and the player getting hit and taking damage. And I think it was around this point that I realized I don't really want the machine to die in the game because I feel like in a lot of these types of games, the machine breaks down enough and you sort of lose. Instead, I want the player to be taking damage from machines. So in a weird way, it sort of devolves into a bullet hell where you don't kill anything, you just maintain the enemies. I also reached back into the old catalog of art assets I had and I had fire that I did sometime in 2020. It's one of the only art assets that I didn't make for this game jam, so I definitely wanted to mention it here. I also finished off the extinguisher by adding the bullets. I thought about using a particle 2D for the bullets in the extinguisher, but first I just tried a normal bullet that I drew in Photoshop, and that looked really convincing, so I just stayed with that. And to add some variety, when the bullet comes out, I do some randomness on the scale and the directions. That way it doesn't look so uniform. Around this time, I also start working on a third item, the bucket. I see when people do game jams, a lot of them have like a Trello board where all their thoughts go down, an Excel spreadsheet, and they go to school and they're good at things. But my garbage brain just has ideas, and then I just start cramming them in until it's full, or I get an aneurysm, one or the other. So I get the bucket, and I'm excited to put stuff in the bucket, but that that means that when stuff's in the bucket, it's got to be on the ground in the bucket and in the hand in the bucket. Oh yeah, that's the aneurysm creeping up on me. And this is where the code starts to spaghettify because now it's asking when you drop an item, was that item in a bucket? And if it is a bucket, what's in that bucket? So I think at this point I was like, these are the items. I was going to have four more or whatever, but no, 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 we're good. This is it. The bucket has killed my motivation for more items. So with the bucket, you can have water in it or oil. I really must have been emotionally scarred from this because I'm looking through my old videos and I don't get functionality and using the bucket for like another three days. So I literally was like, the bucket's full, it remembers what's in it, and fuck you. So I lost track of days, but at some point here, we're coming up on my Tuesday. And Tuesday is my one day off from my real world life job. Might have heard of that. I always have big hopes for that Tuesday. Like I'm going to wake up already in a suit and tie being like, I'm a goddamn developer. But even though I started early and I worked all day, um, I think the primary thing I added was just the first machine because that was a big thing and I wanted to make it so when I add more machines I can just borrow from this machine. And I will say, the machine is also one of those eye-opening moments when you work on a project and you reflect on how long it took to make one of a thing and you're like, well I wanted like seven of those things. So for instance, the machine starts to lose degradation in one of four categories. And let's say wrench is one of those categories, I called it maintenance. Well as maintenance gets lower and lower, it starts to do different attacks. So I don't know if you see where I'm going with this, but the problem is now we have four attacks tied to one category, maintenance. There's three more categories where are we fitting all these attacks in and that's just for one machine what happens when i got a roomba it's got to learn 19 attacks and i got to do it by yesterday so it goes without saying i was a little like uh i don't know if i can do this by the end of tuesday i ended up waking up at 3 a.m on wednesday before my job where i'm just stressed and can't sleep and kind of anxious about adding more stuff 
which sounds rough, but I'm happy I did because it was in these hours that I made the oil attack. And in doing the oil attack, I settled on a couple things. One is the attack itself is going to function just like Monstro's attack in Binding of Isaac. So I kind of messed with this a little bit when I worked on TNT and grenades and my other stuff, but I was like, if I take a bullet and tween it from its shadow to its height and back down and only have it do damage when it gets back down, that's a pretty light attack. It looks like it fills the screen and hopefully it'll come across as a fun, chaotic gameplay mechanic. The other, more important thing about this is that I just tie it as a modular component so I can put it on any machine and when oil is low enough, it starts to trigger this attack and the attack will get heavier the lower the oil. From here, I go back and I go, all right, let's do the maintenance one. Let's just do a basic attack for maintenance and we'll tie that to other machines. Not, not this machine because it is the main turbine and it can be a little different, but for other machines. That was a huge relief getting that in. I wanted to do more attacks. There was a fire attack I really am sad I didn't get to where I was going to have a fireball get spit out and then when it hits the ground, it spawns flames in the room. But it was just more important that I moved on and tried to get an actual game out of this. Okay, so I say that, but now I'm looking at what I actually did next on the docket here and I don't know how necessary these things were, but this is where my brain wanted to go because the machine is spitting out oil. I had the awesome thought of what if you're holding an empty bucket and oil lands in it, then the bucket gets full of oil. Wow, what a afternoon well, well spent there. I kept thinking, wouldn't it be great if you could throw the wrench? Why, why you ask? Well, cause I don't know, but I, I added it in there and you better believe that that wrench went out of bounds all the fucking time. I don't know if there's a special trick in Godot when there's a body that's stuck in a wall, but sometimes it gets pushed out and other times it's like, nah, I'm here, baby. This is where I'm staying. So I settled on this wild code that was like, once the wrench hits the ground, start a timer and... When that timer goes off, if the wrench is still in the wall, then I don't uninstall Windows or delete your Facebook. So a core gameplay mechanic that I didn't mention is that dodging actually drops your tool. So to complicate this a little bit, I wanted to make it so you could do things like throw your tool, then dodge through something, pick your tool back up, and start using it. After getting the wrench where it was, it made me go back to the bucket, which still had no functionality, and then I added throwing the bucket and catching the bucket, which felt like a lot, because the bucket would be in like four different states, or in Jupiter, or... Is it obvious I don't like the bucket? I'm not a fan of the bucket. In the process of doing the catching of the bucket, I had, if you don't catch it, it lands on the ground and then I did a little spill animation with water coming out and just made a different color for oil. So from here I start working on my second machine. I start sketching it out and getting it done in Photoshop. I definitely had one of those nights where you spend your whole time drawing and none of the shapes look anything like good art. It all looks like bad art. Then I go to sleep and wake up the next day and I'm like who the hell drew this? At this point in development I was still really convinced that each machine was still gonna have a core element. So maybe the turbines care more about maintenance and maybe this machine cares more about water. So it's filled with water, it animates as it gets lower in water, it has different idols. Then even though I'm taking the time to explain that here, I realized that if you play the game, it's, it's just never going to come up. It's so weird to talk about a mechanic that you worked on for so long and it never really has a big impact in your game. Like, welcome to game jams. I hate it here. A big part of this was that I couldn't figure out a good attack for the machine to be doing when it's low on water. And not just a good attack, but like a good series of attacks. Like the turbine has three attacks. At this point, time is getting really low. I think I'm approaching Friday. And just to keep the game moving along, I thought, here's what I'll do. I'll just make it to when water's low, it allows fire to spawn. And when there's fire on a machine, it really hurts maintenance quite quickly. I know it's a pretty big cop out and you all hate me now, but there was no way. I, I don't know. There was no water monster or like a water frisbee. I, I could have drawn something, I guess. But time was running out and I didn't have really even an elevator, by the way. We're just in a room. Nothing's happening here. I settled on a pretty easy solution to have the elevator look like it's moving. So initially I was going to draw a background, but actually I just settled on drawing these two pipes. And then when the elevator is moving, I just animate them coming down. And when they hit a certain point, I put them back at the top and have them come down again. So that loops. Since now I was in useless aesthetic mode, I was like, let's take this time to work on the intro of the game where I'll draw a snowy landscape and some walls made out of rocks and ice and oh boy. Also around this time, I had to name the elevator because there was a big sign for it. And it was the sky heap or scrap beep or jeep beep. Whatever the name was, it's, it's not important. And I think now in the timeline, we're getting close to Saturday. So the way my job works, I only get 40 hours, Saturday's the end of the week. So they kick me out after I hit 40. So I line this up perfectly to be kicked out at noon. So from 12 on Saturday till two in the morning on Sunday, I'm just sitting in this chair right here. I got a lot done, I was super happy with. I made a list and I, I crushed like almost everything on this list, which was a little rough because a lot of the core gameplay mechanics just weren't there. Like there was no button to start the elevator. When I wanted to start it, I would hit one on the keyboard. These were like developer codes so I could shortcut things and they're still in. If you hit one, it'll start the elevator. Two makes the machines explode or uninstall Norton antivirus. I don't know, it does something. I don't know how much of the list I want to cover here. Some of the big ones were the bench. This was something that got scoped down. Originally the elevator was going to open every Every checkpoint and you're gonna go out and maybe sit on this bench but it'd be like in a cave and then when you got to the very top the bench would be on the top of the mountain. In order to make this a lot easier I animate the bench it comes up from the ground and then it goes back down when the wave starts. The main purpose of the bench just being to heal the player. One of the last things I did uh, Saturday night, Sunday morning was that note in the very center. Um, it's labeled incorrectly. It's probably misspelled wrong. I don't know what I'm doing. I never graduated middle school. No, I was just really tired and there's a lot of information packed in there, but hopefully it explains the basics of playing. Wow. And now looking at that, I thought I had more done going into Sunday morning. Um, and the game jams do at Sunday at four. I have work Sunday at one. So I had to get everything done and uploaded before then. 
So Sunday morning, I work on the ending of the game. I also work on music and audio. At this point, there was no audio in there. I went over to the piano and wrote the little chord progression and melody that happens in the beginning and end. A crucial oversight I see now is that I wanted music on the main part of the game, but I couldn't write something in time, but I should have just found elevator music online. That would have been actually kind of funny to be stressed out and it's just playing like little snappy music. Either way, this is where I added all the audio that I had in the game. Most of the sounds came from like freesounds.com or MySpace or whatever. I was in a huge rush to upload it, running out of time, um, and one of the few things that I, I remember promising myself, I was like, just play the game. Like, just make sure it doesn't have a big bug that you don't see. But I could only get like five or ten minutes in before I'd be like, oh, you know, this would be a great idea. Let's add like wind for the intro. But I think I only ended up playing through it like twice just to make sure it didn't crash and that the checkpoints all worked. And I remember thinking I wanted it to be harder, but good thing I didn't push on that because I always wanted it to be too hard. And it's kind of bittersweet after that. Um, it feels like you work on these big projects for so long, put so much into them, and then you just kind of chuck them to the ocean and watch them sink to the bottom. And I'm not really sure how much of the game is really fun. Uh, people say it is, but I don't know. I mean, it's kind of stressful and weird, really. And this is kind of why I said in the beginning, I don't know how I feel about game jams. It's nice to start fresh, but then it feels like, what did I do it all for? Something about the journey is always better than the final destination for, I don't know what the quote is. Well, just like last time, the game is playable now in browser, and I'll leave a link to it in the description here. I would really love to know what you guys think. I'm pretty convinced that it's not as much fun as my last game, Germ Ticket, but I think I learned a lot more here, so it was more useful for me as a developer. And now after this, I'll be going back to my other game. I think I'll probably take the next game jam off. I just really want to get some more content done for that game, and hopefully I can share more of that soon. Thanks for watching, guys.